Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Hinterland. We are still in April. Actually, we are just wrapping up the month of April. Happy Wednesday. I hope your Wednesday's going well. Midweek hump day. Let's get this over with. This weekend, for us American folk, it's Memorial Day weekend, so a lot of us will probably have Monday off, which is a true blessing. A true blessing, indeed. Um... I have got, in the far distance there, we've got our Kloss doing some rolling for us to finish up our bean field. I brought over the sprayer because I noticed this big bald spot here in the middle of our cornfield. I was wondering what in the world happened there, but then it dawned on me. That is where I mowed. Uh, before we did anything with that field, I mowed that patch up. And we baled some grass, so we lost our fertilizer layer from mowing. So I brought over our sprayer so we can attempt to fix that and have a little chat about our production facilities and what's happening. Oh, what's happening with our production? Our production is going well. Overall, I'm happy with it, but I was looking at it, and we definitely have some imbalances. Some products we have too much of, some things we don't have enough of, some things are... Pro the bakery overall is a very slow production facility, so it's not keeping up with the flour that we're producing. We are also uh, getting a lot of eggs from our chickens and we don't have enough to do with the eggs of course we can always sell this stuff out right but it, you always get a better price right from production oil is another issue we have got oil 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 especially when it comes to olives i have all of our olive trees and at this point our two strawberry greenhouses are all overproducing. so i've set them all to selling now because they're just it they're backing up big time like me after a you know a big mexican meal and that's never a good thing yeah never a good thing so so we have backup of flour um bread well not i'm sorry flour eggs olives strawberries we're also uh seeing uh, I mentioned eggs, right? Milk. Oh, milk's another big one. We're going to have a lot of milk to deal with. Now, we can sell milk outright, too, but what's the point when you can make a lot more money from productions, right? What else did I notice? Um, our open-air gardens are set to cotton right now. Oh, sugar. That's what, I, that's what it was. So, we're not producing any sugar. And we need to produce sugar for our cakes. And the only reason why we're not having to buy more and more sugar is because the bakery is slow. And it's taking a while to get through the sugar that we originally bought for that bakery. But that's going to change. And we are definitely going to need sugar. So I was thinking for the time being, the first, the first change I'm thinking about making is taking our open air gardens and switching them over to sugar beets. And we can have sugar beets be delivered to a facility that will create sugar from them. However, we currently don't have any production facilities that will create sugar. So we are going to have to find, we're going to have to place a, uh, a sugar making factory of some sort. We have a lot of cotton coming our way from the two large fields of cotton that we are going to be harvesting so I'm not too worried about taking away the open air garden cotton because we'll have plenty of cotton to feed, continue to feed our spinnery. We need to keep our spinnery moving because it clearly is our big money maker. There's three or four productions that I am very interested in adding to our industrial park that we are creating north of town. We seem to be definitely creating a, um, I would say definitely an industrial type park north of town there. Let me turn this off for a sec. So all this area up here north of town, 
is becoming industrialized. And and that's fine, but that's a great place. I'm, I'm going to continue to, to plop things down there. But my thoughts are this. We need to start making our own sugar. There is a production facility that I was looking at that I really like. It's called the Industrial Bakery. The it is it's it's a much faster producing facility. Um, I mean, if you look at if you look currently at our bakery, you'll see that cycles per month for cake, for instance, is only like 192 cycles per month. Well, this industrial bakery is like several many times over faster than that. So our flour <clears throat> will have a chance to get used. We will probably want to put down another oil production facility. So our olives from our olive trees won't get wasted just selling overnight they'll actually be able to be utilized to, at the very least, make olive oil. We definitely make more money making olive oil. Um, so an industrial bakery, there's also a modern, it's called the Modern Sugar Factory, I believe it's called. That looks really good for us to make our own sugar. We'll have to feed that, however, with quite a bit of sugar beets. So we're probably gonna be looking at doing a sugar beet harvest uh, sooner than later on one of these fields or we're going to have to invest in some more land and, and create a, a nice big sugar beet field. So the industrial bakery, modern day sugar factory. There's a third one. What was it? Um, oh, another dairy. Because of our milk and because of the fact that we are really producing, our cows are really going to town on the milk. It wouldn't hurt to have another dairy working uh, to create. This dairy, I think, makes cheese. Um, I think it makes cheese. I think it'll make chocolate milk if we can get our own sugar. And it makes something else now. What am I missing? It makes cheese. It makes chocolate milk. I'm missing something obvious, aren't I? Anyways, it's another dairy. And then... The third or the fourth one that I'm thinking about putting down is if you watched or we out looks like we're out. If you watched um, or were watching the old family farm series, we put an Omatana production facility on that map that makes a lot of different things, you know, French fries and spaghetti and all kinds of things. I'm thinking about placing one of those down as well. Again, not the fastest production necessarily, but certainly a handy little production plant for the uh, kind of oddities. Um, spaghetti is just made by flour, and we've got a lot of flour right now that's just not getting worked through. Um, and if we decide to do potatoes, we'll be able to do french fries, and, and we, we can even get more gardens to do tomatoes, lettuce, uh, mixed salads, things like that. So... I think where I'm going to head, I, I guess as far as where this map is kind of going, it's really turned into, it's kind of evolved itself, right, uh, into almost a production-centric map. I was really thinking animals, and we are doing pretty well on animals. We'll continue to definitely grow our animal husbandry, but I think I'm really kind of excited about getting more productions going on this map we've got the room we've got the uh the space like i said north of town there and um we seem like we're able to do pretty well as far as cash goes from our spinnery our spinnery really gave us a nice cash injection and it's going to continue to do so as long as we can feed it wool and cotton and we will definitely be feeding it cotton pretty soon no doubt about that so i just wanted to kind of run through those things with y'all see what you think if you have any thoughts or comments about that i um 
I think that's kind of naturally where the map is heading for us. So I wouldn't be too surprised if you see some expansion yet on our industrial park. We haven't even touched our fish, our fish um, farming yet. And we will definitely get into that. And our mineral seed, our mineral feed, sorry, mineral feed plant. Uh, we'll be getting into that as well. But we do need to pay attention to our current production. And I think we're going to be better off spending some money on our current production and keeping that rocking and rolling just to keep the cash flow in. We do have some decent passive income as well. So yeah, I think I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this map is going to continue to grow for us. It's, it's looking good so far, and I think it's just going to get better and better the more we invest in capitalizing on our crops to have them work for us more than just you know selling outright speaking of i was watching i stumbled across a youtube video today from a, a youtuber i i honestly forget what his name is but i think he was australian he plays farm sim, but he was going through, he, he kind of was doing a uh, editorial on the game and some of the bugs that exist in the game and obviously venting some frustration um, during this editorial. And I, I liked the way he was doing it because he wasn't doing it during uh, gameplay. You know, it was kind of a dedicated video just for going over bugs that have been in the game maybe they got squashed but are back this kind of thing and I I only bring it up because I noticed I've been noticing on a couple other maps just that we're still dealing with disappearing contracts which is pretty frustrating and he spoke about that quite a bit um, also the, there's still a lot of people complaining about game stutter and lag. And there were a few other things that were brought up that I, that may not have noticed myself or whatever, but he went down the last couple of change logs from the patches that giants put out. And it was kind of interesting to see that a lot of them were pretty were really cosmetic changes or fixes very cosmetic things and i think his point was you know his frustration obviously was you know giants you need to fix the heart of the game and i and i've spoken about this before if you've watched my channel for any length of time you know that i've talked about that very same thing where it's like I personally would rather see Giants focus on getting the game to, uh, optimized, running as smooth as possible, squashing some of these bugs that have been around. Um, I know I've heard about this disappearing contracts thing from a lot of people and several YouTubers that I watch occasionally, they deal with the disappearing contracts. It's like... And it always seems to be in the morning when you first sleep overnight and you look at the contracts and there's like eight harvesting contracts and a bunch of others. And then you can literally watch the contracts disappearing as you're looking at the contract screen. And apparently it's the AI automatically just harvesting these fields in the background, right? That seems like something giants would be able to fix though. And and if you look on the forums, if you look at the disappearing contracts thread, it's huge. I think the last time I looked at it, it was something above 100 pages of people complaining about disappearing contracts. And I had thought, I remember that that was a problem when the game first came out, but I thought that it went away like 1.3 or 1.4-ish kind of area. 
and I think that's what happened, but then it came back <laughs> after another patch. And it is frustrating, I think more so for some people than others. I don't normally care that much, but if you're really trying to, if your game, you know, if you're really trying to play, maybe you're playing with um, starting with zero and you're relying on contracts to make money up front. It can be frustrating, no doubt. You know, no doubt it can be frustrating. I tend to, before I complain too much, I I give Giants a pass a lot of times in some of these things. Even though they're frustrating, I give them a pass a lot of times because they are a very small, relatively speaking, they are a very small company. And it can be very difficult. I'm certain it can be very difficult for them to keep progressing the game but having to deal with you know bugs and stuff but and i get that i really do i just personally and i think there's a lot of other people out there that would agree that giants that we would be perfectly fine with them focusing on getting the game as optimized and bug free as possible like I looked at, and I and trust, eh, I looked at this last patch where they gave us some free content. Now I was raised to never complain about anything free. If you get something for free, unless it's a kick in the groin or something like that, you you should be very appreciative of it. Like I've worked with people that get a bonus every year. Um, I worked at this one company several years ago where one of the salesmen that worked there. For Christmas time, walked around and gave us all a $50 Visa gift card uh, because we supported his customers as technicians and things. And he felt like part of his success that year was because of us techs making sure that his customers were taken care of and were happy. And I thought that was great. He didn't need to do anything. He just walked around and handed out $50 Visa gift cards. There were still people that complained that they got a $50 gift card and that it wasn't more. And that that just doesn't calculate in my brain. Like, I, I just don't really understand that way of thinking. We might as well just keep going and double up on some of this, right? I just don't understand that way of thinking. It's, it's a weird way of thinking to me. It's, but that's just the way I, maybe I was raised or whatever. And that's kind of how I feel about the game a lot of times is, you know, they gave us this, uh, Giants gave us like this free content of Massey Ferguson, what was it, like three tractors or something, and some bailers and things. Now, I'm thankful for that, but I'll tell you, in my opinion, any effort at all that went into doing that was misguided and should have been put into squashing bugs. I have to start wondering at some point if some of these bugs, and this is not unheard of, and trust me, I've been in this computer fix a deal industry for a long time. It's not unheard of. There, these bugs may not be fixable. And maybe that's why we're not seeing some of these bugs being fixed because they're simply not fixable. They're not fixable maybe at all, or they're not fixable unless something much larger. I don't know. Is this missing? I just saw these little patches right here, and I thought, hey, we're here with our spray. No, not really. But maybe some of these bugs aren't fixable until the next version of Giants Editor. And maybe they can't do that until the next version of the game, or they don't want to do that until the next version of the game because it will completely... Um, screw up mods. If they, I mean, I, I would think if they change to, I, what are they on, nine point something right now on Giants Editor? And the engine? I think if they were to make a, a significant enough change, it would really upturn a lot of mods and stuff, and that would be even almost worse. But I honestly am at the point now where I truly believe some of the bugs that exist in this game that haven't been fixed in several re revisions aren't going to get fixed. 
they're simply not going to in this version of the game. And I may eat those words, but I I would almost be willing to bet on the fact that we will never see we will never see contracts that the disappearing contracts thing it's it's not going to get fixed. And I'm not saying that, you know, to be like Debbie Downer and Mr. Negativity, I think it's just reality to some extent. And but if uh, regardless, if that is the case, then I would most definitely love to see Giants focus on things like that on the next version of the game. I tell you, they caught a lot of heat. Giants really caught a lot of heat on this version when it came out. There were several YouTubers that very honestly and openly stated that they felt like this was definitely the worst release of the game. Now, sometimes that's easier, you know, to say than to back it up because it's fresh in your mind and things like that, you know, and, and whatnot. But for me, I, I don't know if it was the worst. I know that based on what I was seeing and based on what I was reading in the forums and things, maybe it was. I can't argue against that. This, this 20, FS22 was, it was a rough start. And that never helps the community, and it certainly doesn't help for new sales. And you look on Steam, I mean, when's the last time? I mean, take the time to read some of the reviews on Steam about this game. It's kind of interesting to see. People that aren't vested in it, that maybe this was their first farming simulator, you know, first farming simulator game that they played. Some of these reviews were pretty rough. And you'll get some YouTubers who, without naming names, that just aren't going to complain at all because maybe they're making their living on streaming farm sim and complaining would only hurt their relationship with giants. And that's just reality. I mean, I think that's true with any software company and and people who are are streaming, you know, very specific games and things. And I kind of get that. But, you know, I can think of one YouTuber in particular that it, it, it gets kind of old a little bit. Like, come on, you, you, you need to use some, you, we need a reality check here, chief. This game is not perfect. As good as you want to make it sound and as much as you want to make it sound perfect, it's not perfect. And I don't know that anybody is really hoping for perfection as much as I think people get more frustrated with with bugs that just never go away. Or that go away and come back. That's when you really start seeing some of the some of the people come out of the woodwork is fix a bug and then take it and then give it back to them later. Yeah, that's that's pretty harsh. <clears throat> I like the game a lot. I love the game. It's, you know, it's definitely up there on my list of all time. And maybe that's where, and maybe one of the reasons why I too would love to see it be as good as it possibly can because I want more people to play it and I want more people to play it and appreciate it and when I read some of the reviews on Steam from people that gave the game a try because they saw that it was popular and it often is on you know up there on the sales rankings and you see comments like you know I don't get it this game you know it's horrible. It, it doesn't run well. It stutters. It's laggy. Um, it does this. It does that. I mean, even if you knock off like the like 20% of that just from people who don't know what they're doing or are trying to play it on a 20-year-old MacBook, 
Because trust me, those people are out there. I know a couple of those people <laughs> who <laughs> who will buy like who. In fact, one of them I know bought Cyberpunk of all things, and literally was trying to play it on a twelve-year-old PC without dedicate without a dedicated graphics card with integrated Intel graphics, and complained that the game looked like crap. Well, come on. Use some common sense here. So you got to knock off a percentage of just for ignorance, right? For people who just aren't. And I don't mean ignorance in, in, in the negative way, but literally are ignorant of what they need to run a game at high-end graphics. Because they see on YouTube, you know, you, they see only the best. And speaking of, holy cow, I was watching somebody playing Cyberpunk the other day who had installed that new, um, some new, what what is it, D, some new DLSS or some some new deal that, that they put out that was kind of a test. It's, it's not even a, a it's, it's a test bed thing, but it adds um, quite a bit of realism to the graphics and things like that. I forget what it's called, but... Holy cow. Oh, wow. It looked... I don't know that I've ever seen a game look that realistic. I turned you off. Didn't I turn you off? I mean, it looked amazing. Of course, that person was running, you know, a $1,500 graphics card, a $1,200 processor, basically a $4,000, $5,000 computer, so there's that, you know, that doesn't help. doesn't hurt to have that kind of hardware. But boy, did it look good. Wow. It looked so good. Like, I honestly, I honestly thought at some points that it looked, it looked real. Like, it looked like I was watching TV in Cyberpunk. He was driving, it was like he was driving some truck. Around, I don't even know what it was. I, I have never played through Cyberpunk. I think I played like 20 minutes of it at one time, but it the the the, the water, the moisture, the um, the damp concrete, cement, the I mean the metal, everything. It was just like I, I it was mouth droppingly good. I sat there and was amazed that I was looking at a computer game. It was that good. But it takes the latest and greatest hardware. So you're going to spend the money to run it that way. And I'm not so certain it's, you know, exceptionally stable at this point. But it was it's a demo of technology that's, I guess, to come from NVIDIA. I think it's part of the art, their RTX layer and things like that. But... I would love to see the game look that good, but I want to. I want this game to be as accessible to as many people as possible, for as long as possible. I mean, I get it. Eventually, eventually, you have to, you have to move on as a game developer, and you can't always support super old hardware. And I understand that, and and I don't begrudge, you know, game developers for doing that because you have to you have to move on if for nothing else for sales but if you're going to do that the game better darn well be optimized and it better run good otherwise you're wasting both parties times you're wasting the people that don't that can't run its time and you're wasting the people that can run it you're wasting their time too been a while since i've had a little bit of a rant i apologize i know that that's probably something that you all don't necessarily come to listen to you want to be you know you want to watch farming and have a happy you know have a happy little let's play thing but it's frustrating to see some of this and i and i am frustrated a little bit with giants that by now this late in this game there are bugs that that just should not exist. 
and sometimes I think there's too much focus on keeping sales up than there are keeping your existing customers happy. And it's getting to that point where they need to start fixing some of these bugs permanently. And, and if they don't, then, then I do believe that they, that they can't. And it's going to take a new version of the game with a new, um, with a new engine and a new Giants editor. And I, and I honestly think that's where they're at right now. I don't think we're going to see some of this stuff fixed in Farming Simulator 22. And I could be completely wrong, but that's just, that's just um, an opinion that you didn't have to pay for. So it's probably worth about that much. <laughs> it's probably worth about what you paid for. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's take a look here. It looks like our roller guy finished up pretty well. We'll have to come back and finish up this um, this swath here for the second layer. Can we put a second layer? I don't think we can put a second layer on this field yet, can we? I think we got to get it. I think we have to give it an overnight growth. Or can you can you put a second layer on after you roll and weed? I honestly forget. Let's take a let's check it out. Looks nice this time of day though, doesn't it? I, I really like this time of the, the day when it starts getting into that late after dinner, you know, five, six, seven o'clock. The sun's kind of down lower. You get a lot better shadows and it just looks, looks so nice. Oh yeah, I think we can definitely put down another layer now. See, I used to, I, I could swear that it used to be between, you had to give it a, 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 um, a one growth period before you could do that, right? You would plant and then you had to wait until it had one growth stage before you could put a second layer down. I thought that's what it was, the way it was. I guess I am wrong on that. All right, well, I'm going to, well, you know what? We probably aren't going to have enough to do this field. So why don't we just drive back and get this thing filled up one more time. And we'll get the second layer of FERT put on this field. And then we can definitely put a wrapper on April. Somehow or, somehow or other, I managed to keep almost $600,000 in the bank for more than a month, which is almost unheard of. I'm amazed that I didn't spend it all. Of course, we're still not out of April yet, so. So yeah, I think uh, I think as far as production goes, um, we need to continue adding plants to keep some of this stuff moving because I'm seeing a pretty good backlog, and I hate to see all of our olives just selling every night. I mean, it's nice because it's passive income in a way, but they're definitely not bringing in the money they could bring in for us if we could get them, you know, working better for us by at least oil at the very least, if not, you know, even get them further down the, the production chain line. And thanks to Omatana, who... Um, is kind enough to make her open air gardens. You can tell it's funny, and and I and I have to assume that most of the modders that mod for this game play the game, but you can really tell. I think to some extent, the modder by the mods themselves, how the modder plays and their game style of play, because Omatana looked at something like creating this open air garden, and literally put. And I hate using the word literally because it's way overused. But in this case, I think it's actually reasonable to say literally put like every possible crop available into these open air gardens, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so we can um, definitely change these open air gardens to potatoes. I mean, I'm thinking sugar beets so we can start making sugar. And what's nice, too, she made it so that you can do something as simple as just water. Or you can really increase the production. So the water, let's say, let's say for sugar beets, the water alone is 1536 cycles per month. 
and it's a one to four ratio. But if you step that up a notch to, what is it, 1536, one to four, to seeds and manure, now you're talking about, instead of four, you've got 256, which is multiple times more. Of course, your cycles per month go down, but overall, your rate increase is tremendous. So it would probably and probably will be worth our um, worth it to to keep seed and, and solid fertilizer on these open air gardens if we really want to produce sugar beets from these things. I think it's going to be probably behoove us to just get a sugar beet field done and just get it get it over with and and go that route. But we'll see how that all goes. But these open air gardens, as far as cotton, has saved, it really has made us a lot of money. Because this has been our only source of cotton for our spinnery. And look how much money we've gotten out of that spinnery. It's been absolutely tremendous. So thank you, open air gardens, no doubt. Well, all right, everyone. Oh, and oh, yeah. And these, these strawberry, <laughs> these strawberry greenhouses are going to town. Like I said, I had to change them to selling every night because we've got a backlog of strawberry. Uh, backlog of, uh, I mean, we're stuffed on strawberries at the bakery. So we're going to have to figure out something with that as well. So we'll see. But I think that's going to do it for this episode of Hinterland. Thank you all so much for putting up with me once again. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any to share on the state of Farming Simulator... Are you still experiencing bugs that are annoying you? Or are you in that farming simulator bliss where you're happy with just the way the game is and you're good to go? Um, would love to hear that. And uh, you all, of course, take care of yourselves. It's most important. Take care of each other. Tomorrow night, last episode of Old Family Farm. I hope you all get a chance to check it out. It is a fun episode. Like I said, very unplanned ending. But probably very appropriate at the same time and i will see you back here then on hinterland on friday but thanks everyone leave a like if you would that would really help the channel and of course you're welcome to subscribe and uh, i'll see you again real soon bye for now